YouTubers, my name is Elise and I'm coming at you guys with another video. This time it is all about PCSing. So if you are a little confused, are you preparing for your first PCS? Stay tuned because I'm about to go all the way in on this topic. Today we'll be going over PCS moves, but before that, my channel makes videos dedicated to the everyday working woman and military spouses. I will be doing videos that are tips and tutorials on a variety of topics, such as military spouse support programs, business strategies, and overall positive thinking. I upload on Fridays, so feel free to subscribe to stay up to date. Like with anything in the military, take what I say today with a grain of salt. Most of these tips are universal. However, it, it can vary with different bases. I will split this into three topics, types of moves, permissive TDY, and most importantly, money. While I would love for you to watch the whole video, I know your time is precious, so I will put the timestamps below in the description. The first type of move we're gonna go over is OCONUS. OCONUS is moves that are outside of the continent of the United States. These are international moves that include Hawaii and Alaska. There are a lot more requirements for OCONUS moves such as medical clearances and OPSEC trainings. I have not personally had any experience with OCONUS moves. I would suggest going to militaryonesource.com to get you a checklist of everything that's required in an OCONUS move. The next type of move I'm gonna go over is CONUS moves, which is a lot simpler than the international moves. These are moves that are done with inside the United States. There's a lot less requirements and it can be split up into three different types of moves. You have your Diddy moves, you have letting the military move you, and then you have a partial ditty, which is a mixture of the two. Ditty moves are do-it-yourself moves. May sound crazy when you can get the military to move you for free, but there are a lot of benefits to it. If you have a small family or you're going a short distance, you may be able to save a lot of money and also provide you with the flexibility of having your home goods with you as soon as you get to your new duty location. Your spouse is allotted a certain amount of money and total weight based on their rank and the number of dependents that they have. You can profit off of this method if you do not spend the whole allotment. For example, if you're allotted $1,000 and you only spend $750, now you have made $250 off of your move. It is important that you weigh your vehicle before you put your items in and after you put your items in and keep all your receipts so that you can get paid out all the amount that you are owed. The next way, which is my personal favorite, is having the military pay for your move. This way is a lot more simpler and you literally don't have to do anything. The movers will come, they'll pack up your items, they'll load your items, and then when you get to your new station, you schedule a drop-off date and they'll drop your items off there. I would recommend that when the movers are moving your items that you watch very closely and make sure that they're handling your items with care. When you get to your new duty station, you will be able to put in a claim for any items that are damaged are missing. The last method is called a partial ditty move, which is a mixture of the last two methods. This method allows you to take some of your items with you in your own personal vehicle when you are moving to your new duty station. It is important that when you are doing this, that you make sure that you weigh your vehicle before you move, before you put the items in, and then weigh your vehicle after you put your items in. This allows you to have some of your items with you when you get to your new duty station, just in case there are any delays and your home good items being delivered. No matter what type of move that your family chooses, your spouse will still need to go on move.mil and start an application on DPS. This process is super simple and your spouse should be able to complete the application with almost no help. One thing to keep in mind is that your spouse is authorized a total weight based on their rank and the total dependents that they have. I do not know the specific amounts, 
However, when you put all your information in, it should be displayed on the application. I have never reached my maximum weight, so I'm pretty sure you will be fine. And if you're like me, you will not know how much your items weigh. However, you're in luck because when you go into the application, they have a weight tool and you put in different furniture items and it'll give you an estimated weight. So you'll know how many things that you can actually bring with you. Once you complete the application, your spouse will be contacted by the transportation department to ask some final questions before they give you an exact move date. Before I move on to the next topic, it is important to know that if you do not know where you're moving to, you can still schedule a pickup. And then when you get to your new place, you then can schedule a drop off. Also, if you have cars, the military will not pay to ship your cars. You will have to make arrangements on your own to get your vehicles to your new duty location. The next topic we're gonna go into is permissive TDY. This is gonna be a very short topic. Permissive TDY is 10 days of essentially free leave that your spouse gets to do house hunting at their new duty station. Though permissive TDY can be granted through the new unit, it is best to try to get it from your old unit just because you already know how they operate and it could be easier for your spouse to get. Next, and probably the most important topic, is money. PCS moves can be very lucrative for your family as long as you know what you're entitled to. Entitlements that you will get are per diem, DLA, and TLE. Per diem, this is the amount of money that you and your spouse will get for each day that you are traveling. It's to cover for food and lodging. This amount fluctuates, so I would suggest going to the DFAS website to get the exact amount of how much you have to actually spend on this. You can actually save a lot of money. Let's just say you and your spouse get $200 each per day. And I know traveling is expensive, so if you get $200 each and you don't spend, spend that whole amount on food, then you will be able to pocket some of that money. The next entitlement is DLA. This is a dislocation allowance, and as long as this isn't your first PCS, you should be entitled to it. Your spouse will get paid this, and it's basically free money. You don't have to pay it back. This amount is calculated on the DFAS website and it's based on your spouse's rank. For example, my husband was a 01, so we got $2,400 once we moved to our new duty location. The last entitlement that I'm gonna go over for money is TLE. TLE is temporary lodging expenses. This is money that you'll get if you have to stay at a hotel in the vicinity of your old or new duty station. And this is usually caused to delay of a flight, or if you have some other type of delay that's causing you not to be able to move into your new house. It is important to remember that this entitlement cannot be used for house hunting, that it only can be used for delays that are beyond your control. In order to get these extra monies, your spouse will have to claim these entitlements when they are in processing at their financing brief. When you are paying for these things, you will have to front yourself the money for per diem and for TLE. However, your spouse can use their government travel card. If your spouse elects to use the government travel card to pay for these expenses, they will have to make sure that balance is paid off at the end. We don't use our government travel card when we travel. We usually just pay it with our own money and then we just have it reimbursed back to us by the military. So this brings me to the end of my video. If you guys have any questions on anything that I cover or any of these topics, please leave me a comment in my section below. And if you notice that I said anything wrong, please let me know and I will redo that part or edit the video to make sure that part isn't in there. And if you have any updated info, that'd be great too, to leave in the comment section below just to let me know. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe for more content. I will try to do these informational videos once every three to five weeks, um, depending on the demand and, you know, just coming up with the topics. These videos take a while to make, so it'll take me a while to put get them out there. So just let me know in the comments below and thank you.